he's taking us to the quiet. quiet. And there's a fresh one if you mouth off again. So it feels a bit premature to be making this video when we're less than halfway through Andor's first season, but from what I have seen so far, this series is already an absolute game changer for Star Wars in the age of Disney+. Plus. It's no secret that I've been less than impressed with the Star Wars shows lately, to the extent I turned two of them into movies just to give the stories a semblance of pacing and structure. But this isn't a video about the problems I have with modern Star Wars, it's about why I think Andor offers a new hope for the franchise. And the key word here is new. Everything about Andor just feels new and different. Take for example the antagonist, Cyril Khan. In just a few episodes he has already established himself as one of the most compelling villains Star Wars has ever seen. See, Star Wars villains tend to be pretty black and white, literally. And that's not to say they are bad, far from it, but with only a couple of very noteworthy exceptions where some character nuance is explored as part of the wider story, the villains in Star Wars tend to be evil because they are evil. Now don't get me wrong, for the most part that is fine, but if you want your story to explore a moral grey area, then you can't have a black and white villain. Which is why Khan is different. Khan is not evil, and he's not even very powerful. He doesn't have a dark saber or a black cape or even much of a title. Unlike these people who exist at the highest tiers of the Empire, he's just this mid-level cop, an ambitious but probably naive kid who has drunk the Kool-Aid of the Empire's propaganda and is determined to prove himself and uphold law and order. And these are noble goals, if you agree with the Empire's point of view that is. So what makes Khan different is that he genuinely believes that he is on a righteous quest to stop a criminal before he kills again. From his point of view, he's the good guy, and that makes him dangerous. Now you might argue that Anakin feels the same way in, say, Revenge of the Sith, but the difference here is that Khan isn't about to go and murder a bunch of younglings. Because Khan has a code, a belief in rules and order. He would be horrified by Anakin doing something like this in the same way he's horrified by his boss ordering him not to investigate the murder and just sweep it under the carpet. He cannot and will not accept this because it goes against everything he believes the Empire stands for. So he goes after Cassian anyway and quickly finds himself out of his depth. But then we immediately see his vulnerabilities, his insecurities. We see fear in him when he's faced with combat, and how many other Star Wars villains can you say that about? Instead of a rage-filled, power-hungry villain wielding a lightsaber, Khan is just this kid who believes that if he toes the line and follows orders then everything will be okay. He's not prepared for the real world when he's told the Empire doesn't care about the murders, and he's not prepared for the real world when he lands on Ferrix and finds the locals protesting his authority or the rebels killing his men in order to evade it. And that just hardens his resolve, and it makes him absolutely terrifying because we have never seen a villain like this before in Star Wars. But while Kyle Sol's portrayal of Cyril Khan is an obvious highlight, Andor has more going for it than just its villain. I mean, I could talk about the phenomenal acting we've seen from pretty much everyone so far, but let's move on to how the show looks. This was the first Disney Plus show not filmed using the Stagecraft digital backdrops, also known as the volume, and oh my god does it make a difference. Now let me be clear that I'm not criticising the volume here. Like any filmmaking technology, it isn't the tech but how it is used. For example, The Batman was mostly filmed in the volume, and it's one of the best looking movies of the year. But Andor was filmed on location in real landscapes, as well as real, detailed sets that just give the entire show more depth and scope, and right from the start it immediately stands out from the other Star Wars shows for that reason. The world feels lived in and tactile, and so Andor is following in the footsteps of the original Star Wars movies by using real life locations to bring authenticity to the alien worlds of the galaxy. Whether it's the muddy, windswept wilderness of Aldani, the grim brickline streets of Ferrix, or the brutalist, bureaucratic architecture of Coruscant, every single location and setting is dripping with character and believability. But overall, I think the thing I like most about Andor is that it draws its inspiration from Rogue One more than any other Star Wars property. Now this might sound obvious, I mean of course it does, it's a Rogue One prequel and it's being led by Tony Gilroy, the co-writer of that movie. But hear me out because the similarities aren't surface level, it's not about the setting or the shared characters or even the fact that it's shaping up to be a heist story. No, it's the entire mindset of the showrunners and the fact that this show has clearly had a completely different approach from the start. Let me explain. See, the original Star Wars was famously inspired by the aesthetics and styles of samurai films, historical epics, dogfighting movies and science fiction classics. So it created this brand new and exciting thing by using familiar genre conventions to tell a completely new story set in an alien galaxy far, far away. Star Wars in the Disney era is, by and large, inspired by Star Wars. 
So you end up in this spiral of references and easter eggs that increasingly alienate casual fans and especially new audiences. Rogue One bucked that trend by using filmmaking and storytelling techniques from war films and spy thrillers and doesn't feel restricted by trying to copy other Star Wars movies. Instead of trying to make a Star Wars movie, they made a war film that happened to take place in the Star Wars universe. This brand new style combined with the cast of almost entirely new characters gave the film a completely unique feeling and tone and delivered us what I think are some of the best moments Star Wars has ever seen. Andor follows firmly in those footsteps and unlike its companion shows on Disney+, Plus, it shuns the temptation to get too deep into Star Wars lore and instead it tells a new story about new characters and it does it on a planet that's not Tatooine. On a thematic level as well, Andor doesn't just have the good guys and the bad, but it explores the internal tensions within these otherwise monolithic organisations in a way that exposes the human side of the galaxy. The Last Jedi tried to do this, but personally I found the two scenes with Genevieve O'Reilly's Mon Mothma to be a better commentary on the lives of the galaxy's wealthy elite than that whole sequence on Canto Bight. I can't wait to see more of her as the series goes on, and that series is, most importantly, a story that was made for TV from the start. A 12 episode run over its first season that, if the first few episodes are anything to go by, shows a clear narrative progression and is paced for serialised storytelling. These episodes are not padded full of filler or artificially stretched out from a movie to a TV show. No, they are properly crafted and structured episodes of TV. Plus the directors behind each episode all have very well established linear TV backgrounds, meaning they understand the fact that each episode needs to work as a story by itself, while also serving a larger whole. The creator of The Boys said something recently that was doing the rounds on Twitter that I think really hit the nail on the head when it comes to a lot of streaming shows. He said the downside of streaming is that a lot of filmmakers who work in streaming didn't necessarily come out of that network grind. As a network guy who had to get you people interested for 22 f***ing hours a year, I didn't get the benefit of oh just hang in there and don't worry, the critics will tell you that by episode 8 shit really hits the fan. Or anyone who says well what I'm really making is a 10 hour movie. F you, no you're not, make a TV show. So far Andor has stood head and shoulders above the other Disney Plus Star Wars shows in terms of its structure and storytelling because it understands the difference between a TV show and a 10 hour movie. Every episode has a clear arc and builds naturally towards the next one. It is squarely focused on the protagonist and the antagonist and introduces supporting characters characters and themes gradually in a way that adds new and interesting layers to the plot. I am really excited for the rest of this series and I really hope that it marks a turning point in the timeline of Star Wars. Rogue One could have been that turning point, but Solo flopped and although The Last Jedi tried to do something new, it ended up splitting the fanbase like a hand from a Skywalker and so Lucasfilm decided to go with the safe option of rehashing the familiar instead of risking something new again. I think that was the wrong decision and I think, I hope, that Andor is the first step onto the path of correcting that because Star Wars needs to grow. Not every story needs to be tied to the Skywalkers. Not every story needs to reference the familiar and not every story needs to take place on Tatooine or its clone. I want brand new Star Wars stories that take full advantage of the vastness of this galaxy and the billions of people and stories that inhabit it. I want Star Wars stories that take me to new planets. I want new complex villains that don't fall into the typical mold of a black cape wearing Sith and I want new heroes that have some moral complexity and emotional depth to their character. And above all, I want Star Wars to give me that same sense of unexpected wonder that made it such a cultural phenomenon in the first place. It's not going to do that by playing its greatest hits on repeat. It needs to take risks and do something different and new. In 2016, Rogue One gave me hope that it would be the new template for Star Wars stories. Seeing what's happened since, I thought it might be the last hope. But now, there is another. And so with over half the season still left to run, all I can say to Andor is that I will watch your career with great interest.